Hi, my name is Susie Castle, and I'm going to be reading James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl, illustrated by Lane Smith. And today is Friday, April 3rd, and we are reading chapter 25. James didn't want the earthworm and the centipede to get into another argument, so he said quietly to the earthworm, Tell me, do you play any kind of music? No, but I do other things. Some of which are really quite extraordinary, the earthworm said, brightening. Such as what? asked James. Well, the earthworm said, next time you stand in a field or in a garden and look around you, then you remember this, that every grain of soil upon the surface of the land, every tiny little bit of soil that you see, has actually passed through the body of an earthworm during the first last few years. Isn't that wonderful? It's not possible, said James. My dear boy, it's a fact. You mean you actually swallow soil? Like mad, the earthworm said proudly. In one end and out the other. But what's the point? What do you mean, what's the point? Why do you do it? We do it for the farmers. It makes the soil nice and light and crumbly so that things grow well in it. If you really want to know, the farmers couldn't do without us. We are essential. We are vital. So it's only natural that the farmer should love us. He loves us even more, I believe, than he loves the ladybug. The ladybug, said James, turning to look at her. Do they love you too? I am told that they do, the ladybug answered modestly, blushing all over. In fact, I understand that in some places... The farmers love us so much that they go out and buy live ladybugs by the sackful and take them home and then set them free in their fields. They are very pleased when they have lots of ladybugs in their fields. But why, James said, because we gobble up all the nasty little insects that are gobbling up all the farmers' crops. It helps enormously, and we ourselves don't charge a penny for our services. I think you're wonderful, James told her. Can I ask you one special question? Please do. Well, is it really true that I can tell how old the ladybug is by counting her spots? Oh no, that's just a children's story, the ladybug said. We never change our spots. Some of us, of course, are born with more spots than others, but we never change them. The number of spots that a ladybug has is simply a way of showing which bounce of the family she belongs to. I, for example, as you can see for yourself, and the nine spots a ladybug. I am very lucky. It's a fine thing to be. It is indeed, said James, gazing at the beautiful scarlet shell with the nine black spots on it. On the other hand, the ladybug went on, some of my less fortunate relatives have no more than two spots altogether on their shells. Can you imagine that? They are called two spotted ladybugs, and very common and ill-mannered they are. I regret to say... And then, of course, you have the five-spotted ladybugs as well. They are much nicer than the two-spotted ones, although I myself find them a trifle too saucy for my taste. But they are, all of them are loved, said James. Yes, the ladybug answered quietly. They are all of them loved. It seems that almost everyone around here is loved, said James. How nice is that? Not me, cried the centipede happily. I am a pest, and I am proud of it. Oh, I am such a sh... <laughs> I am such a shocking, dreadful pest. Here, here, the earthworm said. But what about you, Miss Spider, said James. Aren't you much loved in this world? Alas, no, Miss Spider answered, sighing long and loud. <sighs> I am not loved at all, and yet I do nothing but good. All day long I catch flies and mosquitoes in my webs. Ooh, this is a long one. I'm a decent person. I know you are, said James. It is very unfair the way we spiders are treated, Miss Spider went on. Why, only last week, your own horrible Aunt Sponge flushed my poor dear father down the plug hole in the bathtub. Oh, how awful, cried James. I watched the whole thing from a corner up in the ceiling, Miss Spider murmured. It was ghastly. We never saw him again. A large tear rolled down her cheek and fell with a splash on the floor. But is it not very unlucky to kill a spider? Jack inquired, looking around at the others. 
Of course it's unlucky to kill a spider, shouted the centipede. It's about the unluckiest thing anyone can do. Look what happened to Aunt Sponge after she'd done that. Bump! We all felt it, didn't we? As the peach went over her. Oh, what a lovely bump that must have been for you, Miss Spider. It was very satisfactory, Miss Spider answered. Will you sing us a song about it, please? So the centipede did. Da 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 da. Aunt Sponge was terribly fat and tremendously fabby at that. Her tummy and waist were as soggy as pace. It was worse on the place where she sat. So she said, I must make myself flat. I must make myself sleek as a cat. I shall do without dinner to make myself thinner. But along came the peach, oh, that beautiful peach, and made her far thinner than that. That was very nice, Miss Spider said. Now sing one about Aunt Spiker. With pleasure, the centipede answered, grinning. Aunt Spiker was thin as a wire, and as dry as a bone, only drier. So was she was so long and thin, if you carried her in, you could use her for poking the fire. I must do something quickly, she frowned. I want fat, I want pound upon pound. I must eat lots and lots of marshmallows and chocks till I start bulging out all around. Ah, yes, she announced I have sworn that I'll alter my figure by dawn. Cried the peach with a snigger, I'll alter your figure, and ironed her out on the lawn. Everyone clapped and called out for more songs from the centipede, who at once launched into her favorite song of all. Once upon a time when pigs were swine and monkeys chewed and hens took to make themselves tough, and the ducks said quack, 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 oh, and porcupine drank all the time, and goats ate tobacco, and old Mother Hubbard got stuck in the... Look out, centipede, cried James. Look out! Okay, so on Monday, I'm going to read chapter 26. Okay, I hope everyone has a nice weekend, and see you later. Bye-bye.